evening to you all today our topic is the cell cell is the fundamental unit of life now there are uh, lots of question when we are talking about cell like some people are saying uh, the is it from physics or chemistry or bio precisely we are discussing here about biology now what is a cell a cell is the structural and functional unit of life basically but why some people are saying it is fundamental unit of life when we are using the word fundamental that time only the fundamental is the word which is comprised of both structural and functional fundamental means something which is basic and something which is basic means automatically the meaning we can infer that is a structural and functional unit now whenever we are talking about the cell the cell group of cell forms a tissue we know group of tissue forms organ group of organ forms organ system and group of organ organ system forms an organism that's a simple base so here we need to understand how this thing is happen let's say we know cell is the structural and functional unit of life structural means it is having a precise structure function means it do some functions and when we are talking about all this automatically group of cell will become a tissue group of tissue will become a organ group of organ will become an organ system and group of organ system will become an organism because they are made up of cells they are all eventually made up of one single cell but whenever we are talking about that what is unicellular and multicellular unicellular are the, are the organisms made up of only one cell multicellular organisms are the organism made up of more than one cells now having said this how the cell came up how the cell invented antony von leeuwenhoek in the year 1600 has uh, during that era that is uh, in the year 1632 to 1723 he found uh, some cells means uh, exactly he found one protozoa and when he visualized the protozoa he found the protozoa is made up of a cell and he not only he stopped there but he found that uh, <clears throat> some kind of bacteria are also made up of cells and he named it as animalculus it's a latin word means microorganisms but uh, in the year just after during the era of uh, robert hook that that is in the year 1635 to 1703 1703 during that time robert hook when he visualized the cell under the microscope he found a cock cell and inside the cock cell he found that honeycomb like structure honeycomb that is bee hive like structure where the bee resides and after finding it he said that uh, the living organism are made up of cell but here we are very much confused that what is cell exactly what it is what is its function but during the duration of time when the microscopy developed microscopes developed scientists came into action like uh, <clears throat> scleden then uh, rudolf virchow these are all the scientists and of course who can forget the name of theodor squam because they have only the given especially scleden and theodor squam they have given the pathway how to propound the theory that is cell theory well known cell theory of course uh, scleden and uh, squam scleden propounded that all the ant plants are made up of cells similarly after few years squam also propounded that all the animals are made up of cells here both the scientists they have given their own theories that plants and animals are made up of cells but they didn't combine the main work was done by rudolf virchow rudolf virchow said that each and every organism living in this planet is made up of cells that is the main thing that is the main cell theory now when we started to know more about the cell theory we got a term known as omnis cellule e cellule it's a latin word omnis o m n i s omnis cellule c e d l l u l a e then a hyphen then e then again one hyphen then cellule omnis cellule e cellule it means the cell exists from pre existing cells the old cell will die and in place of that new cell will come that is just the basic fundamentals of the cell theory now apart from this rudolf virchow as it is given in your page number 4 there are four postulates of the cell theory you can go through one by one he said that each and every cell organisms not only the plants even the animals microorganisms sometimes some viruses are accepted in the cell theory because viruses they are just a connecting link between living and non living we cannot say it is completely living or we cannot say it is completely dead that is why now when we came to know nicely about cells and all here is one more uh twist came 
means uh, in the sense in the world of microscopy the microscope evolved day by day first it was simple microscope made up of convex lens just a simple lens where the uh, rays of light will converge and it will just magnify the image then came the era of the compound microscope where the uh, simple unicellular organisms were being maximized 300 or 400 times then comes the uh, era of the electron microscope where 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 5 lakh times the unicellular organisms can be magnified. And this all things are done so that we can study about the different research field going on in the whole world. Now, the evolution of the microscope has given us the idea that what is the cell exactly. And slowly, slowly what happened and how the cell evolved. We learned what is cell division. We learned what is cell theory. We learned what is uh, microscopy. Each and everything we slowly started to learn. So this is what about a general instruction, instruction about the cell as well as a general instruction, instruction about the microscopes. Now, in your page number 4, 5 and uh, behind also you can see at the right hand side some cream color boxes are given light brown color cream color you can see those cream color boxes contain some important points please go through it and mark it now apart from that <clears throat> we need to know that what is the difference between compound and electron microscope given in page number six table 1.1 and uh, then uh, in at the bottom of the same page uh, table 1.2 a difference between unicellular organism and multicellular organism so we must understand it you must you just go through once the moment you will go through it is just a literature term uh, it is written in a very familiar language so you won't feel any difficulty to understand it now when we are talking about cells so first of all it comes cell number if the cell is single it is unicellular cell if the cell is more than one it is multicellular cell now unicellular organisms are the organism which is present in the environment but they are not seen by the neck ties. We have to use the microscope to see them like bacteria, protozoans and viruses are much smaller than those bacteria and the protozoan because it is just a connecting link. Now, when we are talking about multicellular organisms, there are many organisms, dog, cat, human beings, homo sapiens, homo sapiens, just the biological name of human beings. Don't think it's a different species. Now, <clears throat> apart from this, then when we are talking about cell size, some people's belief that maybe uh, uh, let's say an elephant is there an elephant is uh, some people's beliefs that uh, elephant size is more because their cell size is more never the cell size remains the same yes the cell size remains the same what increases number of cells what makes an organism larger than the other it's the number of cells now if an organism let's say a human being a human being is much lesser in size than the elephant correct <laughs> It means the size of the cell is okay, but the number of cells in the elephant is much more than in the human. So the elephant looks a very greater animal and we human beings are just smaller than the elephants. So this thing we need to understand. Cell size does not, de does not decide the size of an organism. Cell number decides the size of an organism. And one more fact is that lesser the size of the cell, more is its surface area. More is it surface area, more the cell will have facility, facilitize to have the metabolic activities. But larger the size of the cell, lesser the surface area and less amount of metabolic activities will be taking place. Now, the smallest cell, mycoplasma, the largest cell, all are knowing ostrich egg. So, apart from this, now we will talk about cell shape. What is the cell shape? Different organs is having different cellular shapes. For example, hand, fingers, palm, thumb, wrist, their cells are different in size. When we are talking about our toes, ankle, foot, this also contains different kinds of cells. Why? Because hands and legs, they are not doing the same work. They are doing the different work. That's the reason why you can also find in page number 8, one topic is there, division of liver in cells. Division of liver in cells means that how the cells are different means how the shape of the cells are different. If the shape of the cells are different in different organs, surely that organ has to perform differently. For example, you can slap anyone by your hand, but you cannot walk by your hand. You have to walk by your legs because the cells present in the legs are different. You can hold a glass of water by the hand but you cannot hold a glass of water by the leg 
practically it is not possible for the but for the healthy human being why the reason is only the same that cell is different means presence of cell in the hand and presence of cell in the leg is completely different entirely different which allows the hand and legs to do different work in a different manner i hope this is clear to you next class that is tomorrow tomorrow we will be discussing about prokaryotic eukaryotic and we will go further in the same chapter thanks a lot i hope you understand